Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Brightworks. Whoa, having a little bit of a issue there. Anyway, <laughs> starting off today's cast as funky as we like to keep it around here. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a match on Supreme Straits. I feel obligated to cover this like every other match or something just because of how uh, how prominent it is on the leaderboards, but I do try and mix it up. Today, apparently, according to the replay file that I was sent, this should be a bit of a spicier match indeed, so I'm excited to see what goes down here. Representing our blue team, it's going to be Iran spawning right here on the front lines of Supreme Straits. This is a very tricky spawn location because if this southern sea is lost, then it can be a really tough one to hold on to. So I am thrilled to see what Iran is going to be up to. Also, some uh, artists in the chat here playing tic-tac-toe, it would appear. Very nice to see. <laughs> not a lot to micro in the early game, I suppose. Uh, Naza, one of the players playing tic-tac-toe, has not gotten his metal extractors. Maybe needs to focus up a little more here. <laughs> all the way across the way uh all all the way across the not straight but isthmus i've been informed <laughs> it's gonna be ozpark ozpark represented the red team here wearing that armada armor and going for quite a few wind turbines here he does have the geothermal spot which is a uh well it's a really really good start it allows you to uh get that energy out really quickly and that can mean either energy converters or it can mean going straight up the tech ladder that's another easy way to fund that it's a uh, it opens up a whole lot of creative options for you so usually this player is in charge of teching up usually this player is in charge of either supporting the front line or porcupining up this little lane right here if you lose this c and you build a bunch of pulsars right here this can be almost impossible to harass with those uh, longbows, right? So that's a that's another viable option, right? Anyways, excited to see what goes down right here. Tic Tac Toe will fade into oblivion here. I'll finally get rid of it. A little bit of aggression already coming out from Iran, who has gone into a vehicle lab that's uh, fairly stock standard for Supreme Straits, especially for the front line right here. Just because of how open and flat this entire area is, your vehicles are going to have no problem traversing it. And I think that makes a lot of sense. Rovers out here guarding the metal that is tied up in all these rocks. Nearly... 2,000 metal, I want to say, uh, uh, 1,000, 1,175, uh, about 1. 1.5 thousand metal. Let's let's call it 1.5 thousand metal, which is uh, nothing to turn your nose up at. That's definitely well worth the uh, well worth the investment there if you can get a resbot out and start eating up all that juicy juicy steel, chewing up those rocks, I guess, and uh, making them into making them into robots. Industry baby, monkey. Monkey Tunes? Monkey Towns? M-N-K-Y-T-N-N-S? I don't- I, I can't figure out what the T-N-N-S is, but uh, we'll, we'll call you Monkey. Monkey D. Luffy, how about that? <laughs> Incisor here, gonna blow apart one of those rovers. There is a uh, blitz out on the field already. Incisor, of course, out to protect the construction vehicle, which is going to start easily eating up all of this metal out on the front lines here. Trying to get a little greedy with it, but there is a light laser tower, so you can't really do too much. Gonna need to see some static defense. Wouldn't mind seeing a twin guard thrown down here, the uh, medium laser tower for the Cortex faction. It could just outrange that light laser tower and it's gonna give you a better chance of holding on to this midsection here. The way that Supreme Straits is balanced, you're essentially supposed to hold, yeah, right against this line right here. I was about to highlight it, but then I realized Captain Cornelia has uh, highlighted the, the, the axis about which players usually try to hold the fronts here. Come a, come a, come a, come a, come a Cornelia. Sorry. If you, uh, if you are interested in bouts of musical nonsense, feel free to hit that subscribe button down below, by the way. Like the video or dislike the video, I suppose. If this is, uh, you know, this video isn't to your senses, feel free to hit either button guilt-free. <laughs> I'm not here to tell you what you should and shouldn't do. Well, as, as long as it comes to YouTube. Uh, coming, coming up into bar, I could probably give you a couple of helpful suggestions. I believe the blue team has secured a vast majority of the metal right here. Yeah, this resbot has put in good work eating up all the metal out of the center of this map. And uh, Naza is being harassed by this Janus here. This Janus almost single-handedly killing this commander. You can see it's got that silver star from playing volley after volley of rocket fire into the maroon commander's, uh, well, health pool. That is, uh, that is dangerous right there. Naza forced off of his valuable metal extractor. You only get one in this position. Make up for it with the extras you get right here, but you only get the one on the front line here, so losing that is actually pretty huge. We'll take a look at Nas's economy for just a second. We can see Pulligan currently uh, up here. There we go. 14 metal per second and 200 energy per second, more or less, depending on wind power. 14 uh, metal per second doesn't seem like a lot, but you certainly would rather have 18, 19 metal per second, right? 
we're we're talking about 25 percent of the economy going down with just a single uh just a single metal extractor being taken over here by iran so this is a really really nice start here as far as naval play goes looks like the yellow player for the red team autopilot has secured the naval uh the naval field i suppose very thoroughly over here we've got a couple of frigates and they are assisted by a missile ship so that missile corvette is going to be firing away at these shurikens that are just losing their lives flying on over here what a bummer it's a little bit of a waste of material here oh transport's gonna fly over there too you're just losing ships oh it will be re-rallied okay very nice to see uh the northern sea likewise opposedly has been won by the blue team's light blue player mm, bobo Bo 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 bo. Anybody ever watched that show? That was uh, that was a weird one, wasn't it? Mustache wielding madman. Bo 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 bo. Uh, anyways, <laughs> side tracks aside, bunch of dolphins are out on the field here, and they're going to be well. They're not going to have too hard of a time shutting down the the uh, commanders over here. Of course, they're not going to have as easy a time as those missile corvettes, which can of course harass from quite long range. It's one of those reasons why I like to play Cortex so much. If I'm on the beachhead position here, uh, or down here. Because you can build those missile ships and you can bring them in on the coastline and you can fire away at all these metal extractors, effectively denying the economy of the player in this spot right here. It's a very, very powerful strategy, very effective, and it can really cause quite a lot of pain. I, uh, I know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two, right? I've <laughs> been on the other end of that, and uh, you can trust me when I say it hurts. We all learn and we all grow together. I had a funny interaction in a game I played recently where... Uh, I got absolutely stomped. I was I was defeated on the front line before the game even really got underfoot, and uh, somebody on the other team commented in the in the in-game chat. They said, "You know, I've been watching a lot of your videos, and uh, they've helped me become a really good player. I think you might have you might have trained me how to beat you." And uh, I realized suddenly how how much more difficult I've been making this game for myself. <laughs> Uh, but I do love it. I love seeing the, uh, that everybody in the community is improving. Of course, that's what the entire channel was built around with those original tutorial videos. And uh, yeah, feel free to go check those out. A lot of those still hold their merit too. So if you're looking to get into bar, maybe you're thinking about improving your game, go take a look at those because they might have some interesting information for you. Might also be a good trip down memory lane. Maybe I should go look at those since I started losing. <laughs> Yeah, the skill level of this game is certainly getting higher, and that's, I mean, it's just lovely to see, right? I, I often compare this game to StarCraft, and although I don't think that the communities are very similar, uh, just because of how massive StarCraft is, there's so much more toxicity in that game. But uh, in, in beyond all reason, uh, relative to StarCraft, it's 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 a relatively young game, right? It hasn't had the, the cultured development that StarCraft has over the years and years and years of refining builds down to the exact millisecond, right? That and it's also, they're not the same game, so you can't really compare like builds. Build orders only matter so much if you're teching, sort of, or I guess if you're, uh, you know, doing your first three or four structures in the early game. So it's it's much less important, uh, much harder to read too. But it is, uh, I don't know, it is an interesting comparison to see that the, the community is developing, the meta is ever changing. God, these Janices have got to be giving Captain Cornelia quite a hard time. Yeah, those missiles, whenever they land, that is going to be pure pain. Ooh, Commander goes down to a volley of four of those Janus missiles, and that will be all she wrote. What a what a pain in the neck, those Janus tanks, man. They really dish out pain. Pain in number. Cornelia in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, Orange Commander losing their last tank here. And the wind turbines are probably going to fall here shortly as well. Grouping them up in big clusters like this is going to allow them to chain react. It won't matter though, those Janus's fire in there and they'd break them down whether they were grouped up or not. The base on the front has fallen. It's about time the backline gets into the game. They need to get some units up here. We're only 8 minutes and 52 seconds into this game. And that means that the, uh, the front line did not manage to hold on to that crucial 10 minute mark, right? That's usually what we're aiming for. At this point, the northern side of the red team's front line has fallen and so it's going to be up to McNarly and Ozpark to get in on this action and try and recuperate on some of those losses. Constructor's already eating up the corpse of the red team's orange player here. Brutal to see. Cannibalism is much encouraged and beyond all reason. You are more than welcome to feast on the corpses of the fallen. You're unlikely to get away with that in a modern day war, but uh, you know, if you're, uh, if, you're, if you're a robot on the front lines eating up some metal off of your cousins across the battlefield, yeah, not, not going to be the end of the world. 
Those bots will eventually go down here to the forces of Oz Park. I think these bots should probably group up again. I really don't feel like we should be streaming these in. Maybe streaming in the grunts, not a bad idea, but certainly the aggravators should be pulled back a little bit, bunched up so that they can fire in unison. That way they can burst down any tanks or anything that happen to be standing by. Ozpark's commander standing boldly against the dark here, trying to uh, trying to be the bulwark for his forces. Oh wait, yeah, no, McNarley and Ozpark are on the same team, so McNarley just uh, sent a D gun towards Ozpark for no reason. <laughs> I was a little confused. I was like, wait a minute, why is the, the red the red player is helping the pink player, but the pink player just tried to D-gun the red player. Maybe it was just an accidental D-gun. Would have, would have cost you a commander there in the uh, in the pre-patch days, but those are long behind us now. Iran has stepped into the water here, and he is going to start lasering apart these boats. Would have loved to see him try and capture that boat. That's always a fun maneuver. Going to shut down a little bit of this production over here. He does have this underwater constructor that's very nicely done. Going to capture some of those metal extractors over here. Very, very good to see. Ah, uh, we do have that uh, cheeky pop-up flamethrower over here. Going to kill the the uh, the geothermal power plant over there. I always call those fusions. I noticed in one of my other videos I called it a fusion, and I think I do that quite often. A lot of wind power coming up here, but we're not doing two by two, so all of these clusters are going to pop if, you know, a missile or something hits right in the middle of them. Very dangerous to build them in that way. I would definitely do this right here. This is a great example. So build big rows of two, uh, and that's going to allow you to expand your economy quite quickly. If we're going to be teching right now, we should probably be eating up the T T2 lab. He is going to produce another constructor out of there, so I guess it makes sense why it's lingering around. But you can see we're a little bit stalled for economy, uh, and that metal right here in this T2 lab could certainly fund the rest of this fusion reactor. Almost 3,000 metal tied up in a T2 laboratory, so once you're, I mean, about 20% of the way done with a fusion reactor, you can just eat your T2 lab and finish up that fusion reactor. You're going to be in a great spot as you produce a whole bunch of metal, and yeah, your economy is just going to be booming. Captain Cornelia calling out desperately for help in the middle of the field here. Naza trying to rebuild here in Ozpark, claiming some of these metal extractors, trying to get the economy underway. Has Captain Cornelia been given a constructor here? I definitely think that they should receive one. I'm not sure if Captain Cornelia... Is Cornelia a, 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 a male or a female name? It, it, I guess Cornelius would be the male version, so Cornelia must be must be female. We'll go with she. <laughs> Always hard to tell, huh? You never know, especially with how many languages play this game. It's uh, it's it's a struggle for sure. Heavy laser towers whittling away at these tanks here. Not exactly going to burst them down instantaneously, but if you give them enough time, eventually they will fall. The hounds here are trying to fire away at a lot of this static defense. They don't have the vision though, so they're missing most of their shots. We'd love to see a spy bot included here, or maybe just a radar jammer. We do have a radar up and running already. Let's see what the red team sees. Currently, this is the red team's vision right now. And you can see it's not a lot. Somehow or another, they did get a really nice scout out, though. So they know where all the players are. Ah, okay. I missed something. <laughs> Raven87 has managed to sneak a cheeky little constructor into the back line here. It is going for a uh, bot lab in the back line in the enemy's back corner. That's why we have a little bit of vision over there. Glad I checked, because otherwise I wouldn't have noticed. Let's see what the blue team sees in case I'm missing something else. Uh, doesn't look like it. The blue team just fighting for the middle of the map right now. The uh, light blue player, Mbobo, has captured the entire northern sector here, building up some static defense to make sure nothing gets in the water, but I don't think that is what our hot pink player is interested in at all. Yeah, you can see going into that T2 bot lab, maybe going to make tumbleweeds, but all said and done, I think probably just going to focus on teching up for the time being. Could certainly go for something a little cheeky. I hold this line from the start but it's two versus one. Indeed it is. In fact, it was a three versus one, I do believe. Yeah, because the forces of uh, holds were also contributing in that fight. So it was actually a three versus one, which is fairly standard on this map. Uh, certainly one of these two players should have been contributing, but both of them decided to go for tech, which meant that the front line fell here. And that doesn't mean that uh, Captain Cornelia is out of the game. In fact, she's going to be able to recuperate losses and uh, push back in if a constructor is handed over, some metal extractors handed over, wouldn't mind seeing that whatsoever. For the meantime, just waiting around though. So get that get that commander back in this game. Always be on the lookout. Help your help your teammates out. Now that that T2 is out though, this front line is quite vulnerable. Those mouths are very very powerful, capable, uh, definitely of dealing with any of these T1 bots here. You can see the light laser towers falling to artillery here, but those mouths will shred them apart even faster. I like, the, I like the composition we're going for here. Resbot's also very important to eat up whatever metal your enemy leaves behind. Static defenses that were built, sure, eat those up right away. Couldn't even turn them back on. Yeah, okay. Gonna resurrect that turret right there, use it as a static defense of his own. Nicely done here by Ospark. 
Has to be careful with the uh, friendly fire there, though. Mauser, not too concerned about shooting at a wreckage. They don't care until the thing is actually turned back on. There we go. <laughs> Eventually, this tower will come back up and online, and that's going to be quite nice. That is actually a nice little boost to the uh, defensive capabilities here of the red team. Bunch of blitzes moving forward here. We do have radar and radar jammers out, so the uh, red team is not going to have perfect vision over here. That radar jammer going to do a great job of cloaking the forces over here, as you can see. Ticks, however, are already streaming out of the bot lab here and going to start running into this laser tower. Wouldn't mind seeing these hounds start to whittle away at it. There we go. I think one or two of them was working on it, but we definitely could have done a little bit quicker here. The ticks will reveal that there is actually a standing army over here. There must be a radar jammer. Uh, at this point, McNarley and Ozpark must be realizing that there's some sort of radar jammer here because there's tons of units, but they're not showing up on the radar signatures. That being said, there's not actually a radar built over here, so I guess that's, uh, I guess that's only half of the issue, right? Sometimes it's hard to tell, but yeah, radar coverage, very, very important. Uh, Red Elven has managed to walk their commander all the way across the map here, starting in the oceans and, uh, yeah, coming all the way across the high seas, going to be stepping out into the water and trying to destroy whatever they can. All right, going for a D-gun here. Sure, why not? Uh, forces are going to need to be redirected here. Looks like a couple of blitzes will be pulled in order to deal with that, but that leaves the front line without an aggressor unit. A little bit of ping spam over here from uh, Mbobo. As, uh, yeah, the commander continues to walk onto shore. Now, there are units coming to deal with this, but the question is how much damage can I do? All right, Mbobo, we get it. Somebody ban this guy. Somebody ban this guy's ping privileges. <laughs> get on it, devs. Uh, Red Elven here, marching forward. Could get a nice little D-gun on these blitzes. Ooh, he's paying attention. Excellent D-guns right there, shutting down the blitzes that were spared to go deal with this, and that is going to turn off the aggression from the blue player here, who is now going to have to allocate even more forces to go... Yeah, handle this issue that is now becoming pressing, I would say. Commander being bombed to oblivion here. Tanks need to be degunned as well. Oh, a couple of scuttles have been spared. All right. Scuttles will end that commander's reign here as they self-destruct, turning that commander into a horizontal pile of metal and slag. Nicely done right there. Crisis management, not too bad. Mbobo having a panic attack to, uh, to match all panic attacks. <laughs> Man, he was, uh, he was not confident in his team's ability to resolve that, was he? Nice little uh, trifecta of anti-nukes have been set up here. See, anti-nuke, uh, where are you over here? Anti-nuke here, anti-nuke here, and anti-nuke over here. Creating a nice little, uh, nice little pattern on the ground right there. Little Treyarch. Cheeky bot lab has been built over on this side of the lab, or this side of the map, rather going to be spamming out a whole bunch of grunts. They are running into a bunch of heavy mines. Heavy mines are so expensive, so that's actually a really, really costly uh, expense to go for here. Radar Jammer will go down. Heavy mines, though, are partially cleared through. No anti-air here at the time being. There is some coming up here, but the build power does go down, and that's going to mean that these bombers are going to be able to retreat here with their lives. They're probably going to try and kill that uh, laboratory, if I'm going to guess. They will indeed. Good hold so far. In the back lines, we do have this bot lab that is still built and still undiscovered. There is a radar chamber, of course. Blue team has not put a scout over there or a fighter or anything. No radar coverage either. So yeah, currently completely undetected in the back line is Raven 87. Ospark's commander getting chomped on, but getting an excellent D-gun right there. Wow, that was a huge D-gun. The, uh, the hounds pushed forward in a line. The commander was right here. Degunned once across the line in this direction, degunned once in this direction, taking out a massive chunk of that army right there. That commander got as much value as it probably could have hoped to. That was a really, really nice play right there. Going down with a fight for sure. Autopilot forced off of that beachhead. The ducks are now rolling out of the TT lab for uh, Rainbow Unicorn here. Ducks are very difficult to deal with. They're a very cost-effective unit to deal with naval units. They're a, they're, I mean, well, they're just very powerful. We did not see any pulsars built over here, so indeed that longbow will be will be uh, attacking this shoreline. One or two pulsars. You put one right here, and you put one right here, and those can effectively crossfire in this entire area, meaning that longbows can't harass your players right there. Certainly something to consider if you're an armada commander and you're playing in this spot right here. Bulwarks do a decent job as well, but not quite as effective, so you have to be a little bit careful with those. And I would definitely definitely include a couple of shields just to make sure that you're safe. 
Meanwhile, Maces are the play of the game right now for Raven87. Raven, where's Raven87 playing from? Ah, so Raven87 is playing in the back line here. Going for fighters while also going for that bot lab across the map here. Interesting decision. Yeah. Okay. Going for some economy. Not the end of the world, but uh, certainly I feel like we should commit to the push on the other side of the map. Like, committing all your resources into this, rather than splitting it both ways, is going to do so much more damage. Uh, we do already have an advanced fusion reactor up and running right now. There's a nuke that's been already charged. Looks like we're thinking about using it here from Cheguar. Uh, he's going to put it ooh, right on the red base. No anti-nuke for the red player. This is going to hurt quite a lot. Anti-nuke, or rather, the, uh, the nuke will launch here in just a moment. There goes that missile. Rising high into the sky and across the map. Ospark calls GG. His spider sense is tingling as he realizes he forgot to build that oh-so-crucial anti-nuke. And all of it will be lost in just a single strike. In comes the nuke. Boom. <laughs> oh, no. Down goes that entire base worth of production. That is a stinger for sure. He does have a couple of constructors that were working on a side project over here. So at the very least, he's going to be able to rebuild. But that that burns for sure. That's a, uh, that's a real that's a real zinger. We've also got a secondary nuke launcher, by the way, that is charged up and ready to fire here. So we could see a second one fly across the map. And I would love to see it because as soon as that first nuke lands, you know that everyone's going to get their anti-nukes up and running as quickly as possible. So for the time being, uh, that nuke should fire immediately and indeed it will it fires right into the anti-nuke that's building here for the light pink player that's another perfect placement right there that is huge nuke takes off nuke number two up in the air and away across the map no way for the pink player to stop this right now all hands on deck to finish up this anti-nuke but it is just too late the anti-nuke missile is not charged and this will be the end for our beautiful light pink player slow-mo cam boom <laughs> oh, the destruction is magnificent, isn't it? There goes effectively everything in McNarley's base. Commander manages to survive, but uh, everything else is gone. Left with but a lone metal extractor to their name. That hurts quite a bit. Not sure why these Mauser were pulled off the front line. They definitely should still try and hold the front. So we have a little cheeky scuttle play as well, trying to sneak its way around. Nicely done. Moving some units around. The uh, the blue team definitely on top of it with the harassment here. Definitely on top of it. Using all of their resources available here. Oh, those scuttles were too close together, though, and they chain reacted off each other as these Mauser fired onto them. That's a bit of a bummer. Those, those scuttle definitely could have done a lot of damage. Even if they just attacked the naval player here, you could see that going up to several naval fusion reactors and trying to build a massive naval force, the ducks are out and about. They're going to be swarming their way underwater. Buccaneers are definitely a little bit better at dealing with these ducks because you can kite around with them a little easier. You can uh, you can keep the buccaneer moving and its depth charge launchers will continue to fire. The submarines have to sort of stay stagnant. They have to they have to kind of move in a fixed fixed trajectory, making them a little bit harder to fight these ducks with. Of course, chasing the ducks is going to be a good position here for these submarines. But uh, yeah, this is a really really big push with all these ducks. That's uh, ten thousand metal worth of ducks. Not cheap by any means, but still very, very powerful. Nicely done, by the way, to have the forethought to put up all of these heavy mines right here. That's very nice to see. Going to shut down any early Marauder rushes, at least for the time being. Wouldn't mind seeing a Juno coming up and running for the uh, for the red team here. Just because of how heavily mined they know that that shoreline is. A couple of platypuses do manage to... Oh no, sorry. A couple of Seekers manage to... Oh, there is platypuses. Okay, I thought I was losing my mind there for a second. A couple of platypuses with a couple of Seekers. Managing to make it into the back lines here, losing my breath. <laughs> Too much to talk about. When are we going to pull the trigger back here? At this point, I mean, it's a miracle that you haven't been scouted, right? Like a single scouting plane out of the back line here, and this all falls apart. It is just, uh, you're really pushing your luck here at this point. I think these units need to pull the trigger. I think with this many units, you certainly could snipe one of these uh, fusion reactors, advanced fusion reactors, and I think with uh, a little bit more time, we probably could get both of them, if we have good enough micro, that is going to be down to Raven there to win that. Nuke is launched, but there was an anti-nuke ship available here. Uh, maybe that's not where that fired from. Uh, it looks like it. I'm not sure exactly where that anti-nuke was fired from, but the red team did have coverage, and so it won't connect uh, here in this middle of the map. Red team already ravaged by those nukes. It's a, uh, it's a wonder why the blue team isn't pushing in here. 
two players have been completely nuked and uh, our units are sitting idly by. This is, uh, this is quite odd. Yeah. Not sure exactly what the, what the plan is here, but a lot of these units could just be walking passively forward. Giving the red team the opportunity to continue uh, rebuilding their forces, right? This is this is just putting time, putting putting comeback time on the plate here for the red team. Are we gonna do it? Are we gonna do it? It's what Raven eighty seven sees. Those are some juicy blobs down there. Let's send the uh, let's send the maces in one direction. Let's send the maces over here, and let's send the uh, let's send the pawns in this direction. I feel like that's gonna work pretty good here. Little little conjoined strike. Maybe some centurions for a little bit more tankiness. Hover tanks are now rolling out of the back line here. Cataphracts, the uh, cortex heavy T3 hover tank. It's a uh, it's a powerful one. I think I like the lunkhead a little bit better just because it feels a little more consistent. But uh, yeah, certainly the the cataphract is powerful in its own respect. Much better at bursting down heavier units. It fires sort of a sustained laser beam. There are some abductors over here They're going to be firing their EMP beams at these seekers. Not a tremendously efficient way of dealing with those seekers, but it is a way of dealing with those seekers. Eh, not bad actually. They there's a little bit of AOE on the uh, on the the laser beam, the EMP beam right there, so it is quite powerful. Just looking around the map, seeing the uh, the tech diagnosis. Missile ships raining on McNarley's parade here. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a dead lab if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Not much left but scrap metal right there. Ah, uh, the trigger has been pulled. There we go. So we did not split, oh, well, we did kind of split the forces. Okay, so some maces are gonna roll down that way, but mostly we're just gonna go after this fusion reactor that will shut down all of the production here for the purple player. Finally, this is all scouted, of course. Anti-air uh, bots have been produced in vast number. It will be EMP down though, and that is going to be the end of this aggression right here. Unfortunate, because I really feel like these units could have done quite a bit more if they had been, been split up properly. But still, taking out one of the backline players, very well worth it. Ninja. <laughs> That's the ninja maneuver right there. We have both T2 air for Armada and Cortex in the backline here. That's quite nice. You get those really heavy bombers out of Cortex, but you also get the uh, all the versatility out of the Armada stuff as well. It's always good to see. Platypus will be spared to try and deal with these missile ships here. Not actually very much, uh, if anything at all, that actually can fight these Platypus and these Seeker over here. So these have free reign to go turn off all of these missile ships as well as these anti-air ships here, as long as they don't stand still. <laughs> Not what's going to be happening here, apparently. Another cluster of scuttles making their way across the map right now. Fighters were pulled, but not nearly enough of them. And those will be shut down rather quickly here. All of this will be shut down by EMBs and rocket launchers and all sorts of different stuff. And eventually, that is going to be all she wrote for the aggression from Raven in the back line here. Nicely done by the air player. Those uh, those EMP those EMP missiles can be difficult to uh, can be difficult to to manage properly. Right? You can end up shutting down your own units just as much as you can shut down the enemies. Bobo taking quite a hit here from these uh, heavy laser tanks. Commander will go down here to the depth charge launchers mounted on the undersides of those tanks. They have little uh, peripheral sweepers that they can use in order to fire those depth charges down. A couple of scuttles, though, are preparing themselves on the beachhead right here. We'll love to see a Juno missile connecting over here to shut down any radars and, uh, and uh, anti-radar, any radars and jammers. Just so that these scuttle are undetected by any radar presence. When they when they're detected by radar, they can be shot at, but it's a, I mean, obviously it's a radar ping. So unless you have any of those um, pinpointers, you're not going to be able to hit them accurately. Won't matter though. They're getting pretty close. There they go. Are we self-destructing them? We are self-destructing them. Very nicely done. When you self-destruct these, they do immensely more damage here, and you can see this front line is now put into pieces. The uh, left side still relatively strong here, but there is uh, there is a big, big, big hole open now and available. Tumbleweeds rolling out of the water over here. 
trying to uh, find a trade. As soon as the tumbleweeds get out of the water, they're much less powerful. They are, uh, yeah, they're, they're much better in the water than they are out of the water. Still able to uh, kill one of these pulsars, or one of these starlights, though. Not bad. But I think I like the position here for the blue team quite a bit more. Currently, the blue team pulling in 850-ish metal versus the red team 700-ish. So the, the uh, material advantage goes to the blue team for sure. However, I like the position for the red team a little bit better. Uh, maybe I don't, actually. The more, the more I review this, there's two players that are down, one over here and one over here, all trying to rebuild. Uh, Captain Cornelia was not handed a commander. She really needs one pretty badly. Um, just spectating the game at this point. Oh, nicely done. Catching all these platypus with tumbleweeds. Very, very nice to see. Shutting down that aggression before it even really starts. That's so, so nice to see. Very, very well done with those, those uh, tumbleweeds. Such a versatile unit. You really can use those to do tremendous effects. And uh, after all that aggression, yeah, two of these will survive. <laughs> Probably not what the green player was hoping for here. A couple of mammoths are leading the charge on the front line. Maybe that's what we were waiting for in order to get aggressive here. We need some pinpointers from both teams. Neither team has any pinpointers, and those are going to make your uh, make your artillery units, your, your firing into the radar units, a whole lot more effective here. However, tanks now making their way across. Starlight's, of course, going to be able to fire at these guys' pulsars as well. Pulsar a little preemptive there. <laughs> Thought it was going to hit him. Ron's commander kind of in the firing path here. He is waiting, though. He knows he knows he has to uh, degun some of these down if he wants to stand any chance of surviving against all of these cataphracts. Deguns go down, and the commander will fall shortly after. Enough of them had their laser beams charged. But they were able to uh, blast apart that commander relatively quickly here. Ooh, abductors here. EMPing down some of these tanks, though. Nicely done. Abductors so powerful, showcasing their strength. Absolutely here. Very, very nice to see. Mammoth's making slow but steady progress in the middle of the map here. Uh, emphasis on slow. <laughs> Extremely, extremely slow unit, but uh, I mean, for what it's worth, you get a uh, you get a very beefy boy out of it. So, you know, speed, speed over, speed over, over strength, I guess, or strength over speed in the cortex eyes. Uh, we do have some of those heavy bombers being built here by our backline player XRGX. Bombers just grouping up somewhere. They are... Oh, they're just filed into the queue. Okay. Not bad. Just uh, wondered where those bombers are. Wondered what our numbers are up to. Actually, let me check that really quickly. Let's see. We are up to... Five bombers. Grand total. <laughs> Certainly enough to damage some uh, lighter infrastructure. I mean, you could uh, you could bring it over here. Maybe kill what this advanced geothermal up here. That would certainly be worthwhile. Sniping that with only five. I think you can probably kill that with five Cortex Bombers. I have to imagine. A couple of Dreadnoughts getting a little caught up over here. We did go for a capital ship, but it's not being used across the map, which is a little disheartening. That's kind of the entire point of building one of those. We are building some Pulsars over here, so that's quite nice. Those will be able to reach out into the water and snipe away at any of those missile ships. But again, we need to see them over here, and we need to see them over here. Probably not what the red player is thinking of right now, though. He's probably entirely worried about keeping that front line stable. Rebuilding here off of a single fusion reactor. Not the end of the world, certainly possible, but it is going to set you a little ways back here. You can see that relatively little damage has been done to the blue team, comparatively anyways. Oh, interesting. We've uh, we've got a plan here. Bunch of commandos being built. What is that, 14 commandos? 15 commandos? That's, uh, that's quite a lot. Uh, I'm guessing we're going to go for transports here. That's a lot of commandos being built in the back line of the blue team here. Probably looking to go for some sort of aggression. Commandos are radar jammed, which is really their their significant speciality. Oh, there's a commando heading out from this team as well. All right, both teams thinking the same thing. <laughs> Lovely to see. Yeah, okay, so a commando is going to be dropped up on this island over here with this pop-up flamethrower. Flamethrower has been denying this geothermal for this entire game. I guess the... Uh, the blue team has no idea why constructors keep dying over here. They just send the constructor a look back and the constructor's dead and they're trying to figure it out but haven't managed to. 
It's the uh, it's the flamethrower turret right there. Uh, I mean the in 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 inconspicuous looking little wall right there. Yeah, not no flamethrower turrets detected here. Oh, commando will. Oh, well, okay, that was that was a bit weird, but the commando will be dropped off here on foreign soil. Autopilot, uh, your commando is waiting. Does the blue team see it? They do not. Okay, we are going for transports. How many is the question? Are we gonna pick up all these bad boys? The yellow, uh, the yellow fleet is moving out. I almost said the yellow armada. Oh, EMP bomber shutting down all of the anti-aircraft right there. They were all grouped up together. Those uh, arrow storms, you can see, paralyzed, well, effectively out of this fight here. And that's going to mean that these units have an excellent trade against all of this. Those EMP bombers, so powerful. Nicely done. Very nicely done by XRGX, getting that armada strength involved there. And that's just several of those despots going down effectively for free as these uh, anti-airships were not able to prevent the EMP bombers from ravaging everything on this line right here. Nicely done. Excellent air move right there. Very, very nice to see. Oh, fighters accidentally abandoned some of those EMP bombers, so they will be caught by some of the enemy fighters, but that's all right. The, uh, the blue fighters will eventually turn around and they will start to attack the red fighters. Flag is included here, nicely done. All of this has been EMP down though. Such a, such a brilliant move right there. Very nice air control, love to see that. Very, very good to see. Commando's on the move. Oh, Commando is dead. <laughs> Blasted apart by a bulwark before he even got a chance to do anything special. Let's see all of these guys working on uh, 36. Oh, I see. I, I wondered why that was uh, glitching a little bit. Yeah, so there's there's a ton of transports built right here. And they're just, uh, they're all queued into the same exact space. <laughs> Up to 46 transports at this point. Yep, there they all go. <laughs> Alrighty, okay, we've got, oh, well, we've got even more than 46. We've got tons and tons of transports here. 85 transports. I guess the idea is to produce as many as we can, and then, you know, some of them will be shot down, but the majority of them will make it through. The red air forces have been depleted, though, and so that leaves the red team in a pretty precarious predicament here because they do not have the air coverage that they need to defend from this player here that is going into so many of... The, uh, various, the various aerial units available in the game. Going into both Armada and Cortex T2 is a tricky thing to pull off, but it's definitely a feasible strategy for managing, or for creating rather, a very powerful air force. Pulsars firing away at these T3 heavy hitters, the uh, Razorback. doing their best to burst through this armor, but uh, it is a thick hide on the Razorbacks there, and so it is not easy to break. A little bit of an APM stall here on Euron's, uh, Euron's side, though, as these these Razorbacks just take a ton of damage from those Pulsars. Oh, kind of a waste of metal right there. Those Pulsars will burst apart those Razorbacks quite nicely. Finally, some aggression. I think we've waited way too long. All of this could have come, I mean, five minutes sooner, and uh, yeah, we wouldn't have had all these defenses set up. It would have been, it would have been much, much easier to deal with all this. Instead, we're going to have to deal with porked up defenses. Still these Mauser that did retreat off the front line. I'd love to see those being reused here. And now you can see them just shredding apart this army. Bombers coming in as well. Excellent connection from the bombers right there. Very, very nicely done. Massive movement on the southern side over here. Bunch of Shiva walking underwater, accompanied by ducks, which is a interesting choice there. It actually covers those Shiva quite nicely, going to give them a little bit of uh, covering fire. The commander, or the commandos rather, will be picked up. Those commandos. Oh, a little bit of a stray bullet popping up out of here. The uh, Black Hydra firing away at the economy of the blue player. A shield is eventually put up, but uh, yeah, that, that popped all of the energy converters right there, as well as the build power. So these, these, uh, these fusion reactors are actually in a little bit of trouble. Tons and tons of tumbleweeds will be spared as well, and they're going to be rolling right into the face of that Black Hydra, probably looking to kill it. Certainly possible. Those Black Hydras are capable of a, uh, or th those tumbleweeds, rather, are capable of an immense amount of damage, and there's no depth charge launchers or anything like that to try and preemptively shut these down. They're not on fire at will, and I'd love to see them change to that. Put them on fire at will and detonate them all at the same time underneath that Black Hydra, just to make sure you kill the ever-living snot out of that thing. 
Watch how this thing melts away, though. Oh. Oh, well, that was a little a little preemptive there. I don't think all of those got an effective connection. But still, jumping from 49% uh, to 20%, almost 30% of damage on a single Black Hydra, just from a bunch of tumbleweeds. Comparatively, metal-wise, that was a horrendously metal-efficient trade. All right, we're sending the boys. The boys, the boys are sending. It's 150 Hercules air transports. 11,000 metal and transports here. Sometimes the commandos rely on stealth, right? They rely on that anti-radar in order to uh, make it through. In this case, we're just going sheer volume of volume of commanders. <laughs> you can shoot down one of the transports. Hell, you can shoot down 50 of the transports, but there's still 100 more after where that came from. And uh, some of them are even carrying a lethal payload. You can see them dropping these commanders down here, commandos rather, which are going to start ravaging the lines all over the place. Ouch, this is going to start to hurt. Commandos marching into the back line here. Pushing forward. They do have that commando blaster up up on their uh, shoulders that they can fire here. Yeah, it is commando blaster. I was, I was wondering if I remember that correctly. Yeah, commando blaster. And uh, they're going to start picking apart all of the build power here from these players. We'll love to see some of these pulled off and sent to go, well, kill this, who uh, Ozpark took over that base over there. Was somebody else's, but now it's Ozpark's. Yeah, we really should split these up. No reason to sacrifice all of these in this this uh, explosion right now. Oh, a little bit of missed micro there. Would love to see these change their rally a little bit here. Behemoth is out on the map, but it's way too slow to catch these commandos that are now marching towards Raven's base. He's trying to put up a pulsar right now. I think we're going to do better with a couple of uh, a couple of these pit bulls, the pop up turrets. Still, the pulsar going to be quite nice. Maybe going to kill one or two of them. We'll call it two. Commando Blaster capable of doing some huge damage, though. Look at him melt away that advanced fusion reactor. We need to spread these out a little bit. Oh, landmines. There we go. That's their other secret weapon. And down goes the fusion reactor. Absolutely wonderful. Wonderful play right there from Holds. Manages to move those commanders into the back line. That was Holds, right? Yeah, Holds moves those commandos into the back line. Manages to pop two bases in the back. Very, very nicely done. And that's enough to convince the red team that there is no hope. They should hold out no longer. Excellent play right there. Showcasing the strength of the commando 100%. Awesome to see. Love that commando gameplay. Those mines are so dangerous right there. We should have definitely seen a pit bull turret go up or maybe just a uh, maybe just eat up those commandos with the build power. But either way, that was a, uh, a swift way to end that battle. Some really, really interesting plays. We also had those Shiva marching across in the bottom here. I think if I close out of this, we can see wherever those died. Yeah, they were pushing down on the southern side over here. Looks like they managed to take out a base as well. The, re or the blue team leaning on that eco advantage to eventually snatch victory out of the jaws of defeat right there. Very nicely done. Excellent push, and I really enjoyed that. Hope you enjoyed it too. Again, feel free to hit that like button or the dislike button down below. Always love to hear your feedback in the comments section as well. You guys always have some lovely stuff to say, and it's one of the reasons why I'm so happy to have this community. But anyways, I'll let you go for now, and I will see you in the very next of videos. Peace out, folks.